involved in a horrible accident, trapped in a hospital bed, but yet then suddenly free and powerful in a land familiar but changed. This is the beginning of volume number one of C's light novel series in the land of Lee Dale. This one has artwork by Tenmasu. It's released officially in English by Yen On with a translation by Jessica Lang. If you want to pick up your own copy of this one, I'll have a link in the description down below. So I'll get rid of that. <clears throat> you said that I don't need to hold the book up anymore, so make it so. In the Land of Lee Dale is the story of Kana, a girl that, as I said, was involved in a horrible accident in our world and was hospitalized and was relying on, of course, machinery to survive. And, well, she wakes in the Land of Lee Dale, a world that she's familiar with because it is a VR MMO that she had previously played and was one of the top players in. She puts it together pretty quickly that the last thing she remembers is a terrible storm. A storm that she surmises might have just knocked the power out to her life support. And that just maybe this is the afterlife. Or is it the afterlife? We're not really sure, obviously, it's a first volume in the series, but in any case, Kana finds herself in this land of Leedale, in the persona of her character from the game. However, the world is a bit different because she discovers quite quickly that it's 200 years after the time that she played the game. The world has changed, countries have merged, there's really no evidence whatsoever of any other players. Some of the things that they created have been left behind and have been relegated to legend. But Kana decides, hey, I'm here. I'm ridiculously strong and healthy. I might as well just enjoy myself. And so we basically follow her as she begins a new life in this somewhat familiar world. And we really do get a sort of laid back slice of life fantasy. Now in the land of Leedale isn't going to do a lot of things that are super new or groundbreaking. This is one of those light novels that you sit back and you relax and you enjoy the slice of life elements. There are a couple of side characters that have a relationship with Kana, of course, this is a fantasy world, so there are some races that are long-lived, and so there are actually NPCs who remember Kana as a player. And it's actually this relationship between her and these people that remember her and had a relationship with her, relationship, again, this is kind of a strange thing because they were NPCs before and now they're living, breathing creatures. In any case, Kana and her relationship with these people is really kind of the core entertainment value of this book. It doesn't take up the entirety of the book. The book begins in sort of a starter village where Kana very quickly endears herself to the people by being able to solve, well, pretty much all of their problems with minimal effort, which, you know, when you're ridiculously OP compared to everybody else is, well, kind of the way things go in light novels. But I really found that I enjoyed this novel best when it got to the point where she sort of left that starter village, moved to the city, started her life there, and started coming into contact with people that she had a previous history with. It created a slightly different feel to this book. Uh, the relationships between these characters was actually quite entertaining, a lot of comedy level to it. And that is probably where this book shines and is a bit different than a lot of other typical sort of isekai reborn into the world, perhaps reborn into the world hundreds of years later. Uh, now, I don't really want to get too into detail about it because it's a pretty big spoiler and it's a lot of fun just to kind of discover it on your own. Also, unlike a lot of isekais, this one is written in the third person, which works really effectively for this story because it means that the author is free to shift points of view, which again was entertaining because you get to also see how people who aren't Kana 
view her and view the world and view what changes she could potentially be bringing to the world. There are some mysteries that are kind of developed along the way. Uh, there is some allusion to the fact that perhaps the servers shut down. So it's kind of an interesting thing because Kana's not only found herself in this world 200 years in its history later than when she was a player, but it actually sounds like where she passed away, passed away it's, that's an assumption, but where she passed away supposedly, it seems like somehow the game still went on. It's not like, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's not like she just immediately inserted into 200 years in the game. It sounds like the game's history did continue on with other players for at least a little while before she came into this game. Uh, which again, sort of suggests a couple of sort of secrets. There's some hints that there might still be at least a player or two, or maybe they're NPCs. We don't really know. Uh, so there is a slightly bigger story hinted to at here, but Again, this, this is much more of a slice of life, laid back, adventure type light novel. Uh, it doesn't really seem to be setting up any kind of major story that's going to be world altering or world shattering. But again, I may be wrong. This could be just a big, huge setup just to kind of get this character in place and to kind of get the cast into place. One of the things that I usually fail to talk about in my light novel reviews is the artwork, but I'm definitely going to mention it here because the artwork in The Land of Lee Dale is absolutely beautiful. Uh, the covers are stunning, but even the interior artwork... Uh, you know what? Uh, maybe I'll see if I can have a piece of artwork sort of fill this screen. I'll see if I can find some, just because trying to show you out of the book is a pain, honestly. Uh, but I can show you like the interior black and whites even like there's like they're quite They're quite detailed. They are very well done. Uh, the artwork is a real plus side of this the covers as I said uh, Honestly, the description of the book sounded You know like what I got <laughs> But it was the covers that made me just sort of go wow like I really want to read these just because I think they're so beautiful. Uh, but again, if you're looking for more of a slice of life laid back adventure type series that has some fun characters and actually has some fun relationships built into the characters and into the series right away, as opposed to the strangers becoming a family type thing, this is definitely one that I would suggest you check out. In this video, I want to say a special thanks to Mitchell Von Regen, Yun, Renzoz, Shelly Ann, and Jonathan McCabe for their support on Patreon, as well as the support of all of my patrons who helped to keep this channel running, as well as supporting all of my other light novel type projects, such as the Light Novel Podcast and EnglishLightNovels.com. So after doing a couple of volume ones, I'm going to get back to a series that I've managed to somewhat keep up with. There's two more volumes left, but, uh, I'm going to get to them definitely because I've come so far in this series, further than any other series that I've read. So my next review is going to be part two of Owari Monogatari. Uh, this of course, Nishio Ishin's final trilogy leading to the end, end of the Monogatari series. Uh, of course, if you're familiar with Monogatari, we know that this was not actually the end. Nishio Ishin just couldn't resist coming back to the series. However, uh, we haven't heard anything about that getting licensed, so for now we're going to treat this as actually the end as Nishio Ishin planned, and we'll see what happens in the future. So, Volume 2 of Owari Monogatari, that'll be my next review. In the meantime, thank you so much for checking out this video, and I'll look forward to seeing you in my next one. Till then, bye bye for now.